Hey you guys, it's Brits tonight. We're here to talk about a few different topics. I figured that um, we could just go over some recent nonsense that's been happening on social media. I want to talk about Jojo Siwa and her rebrand flopping in the biggest way possible. I also want to cover Avery Woods now showing her son in in a bit of a different phase that he's in and plugging it as content. And I'd also like to talk about Evelyn. Evelyn is a child influencer who was super popular on TikTok. She left the app for a little while and decided to come back on her 13th birthday. That's right, 13 and she's coming back to social media. Um, so I had quite a few thoughts and I also want to address a recent comment that I received and talk for a few minutes about it. So if you're interested, timestamps will be down below as always, but if you're interested, please keep watching. All right, you guys, so let's first talk about JoJo. JoJo, it, as of the past few months, JoJo has been in a very interesting phase. And I call it a phase because I don't think that this is her being her authentic self. I don't think that this is something that's gonna be long lasting. Um, because if it's, if it's like a chapter, if it's something that you're just, changing into a newer version of yourself, I, I wouldn't call that short term. That's going to be part of your life for several years. And it, her, her entire presence, her demeanor, the way that she looks, the way she's dressing, all of it to me comes off as very disingenuous. And I don't believe that it is truly who Jojo is. And so I want to talk about that for a quick second. Jojo right now, as a reminder for anyone who's interested, she has almost 46 million followers on TikTok alone. That is a huge, huge audience. And I don't feel like she is really capitalizing off of the size platform that she has been given by all of these people following her. And that's why I feel like she is in her flop era. This is her rebrand is a flop. Her everything that she's doing right now is a flop and it's very cringy to watch. I don't like watching a lot of her videos and I, I do it because I've covered her before and I know that some of y'all are interested in it, especially because of her ties to Colleen Ballinger and just the fact that she's been on YouTube for so long and she is a child who, um, you know, she, she was a child YouTuber. So I think with the content that I cover, it is an interesting conversation uh, piece. But she just released this new song and the music video and this red carpet appearance that she recently did, her costume is jarring. I'm not even really sure how to respond to her costumes right now without sounding like a complete mean girl and a bully and that's not what I'm here to do to her but it's very um it's very confusing and I know for a fact that Jojo has a team of people around her constantly giving her advice boosting her ego she's paying these people um and she's probably paying them a fair amount of money as well all of these people around her allowed her to come up with this rebrand and this just ain't it. I think the thing that some people are missing in the conversation with Jojo Siwa rebranding is that Jojo's rebrand is not going to attract anybody and that's why everybody is making fun of her and even though I disagree with outright, you know, bullying her, I understand why people look at it as a bit. They think that it's funny. They think that it's not serious and she shouldn't be taken seriously. There are also other people that are just simply 
mad at, at what she has done with this cosplaying as a bad girl and she did bad things and all of this kind of stuff. It's just strange. Jojo should have taken her, um, her being young and successful and been able to translate it into a more mature version of the Jojo that everybody knew and liked. And that's just the complete opposite of what she did. Now, aside from her not connecting or keeping any of those people that were there with her, you know, over the last several years, the other theory that I have with this, is it just outrage marketing? Is it what Gabby Hanna did and what Nick Hikado Avocado has done and Jake Paul, Logan Paul, all of these other creators, is she following that blueprint? where she wants to make people so mad because she knows that it is people talking about her and maybe she's seeing it as there's no such thing as bad publicity. I think the other thing that Jojo is kind of missing is she still has some of these kind of parts of her personality that were with her when she was that young loud girl wearing the bow in her hair and everything was neon sparkles glitter toys dresses um you know she still has a tesla with her face on it so if we're supposed to be entering into this rebrand of i was a bad girl i did bad things whatever that's supposed to mean you think anyone's gonna take you seriously when you're literally driving around with a tesla with your face all over it and brightly colored uh, seats on the interior, like, it's very confusing. It's hard to get people to follow along if you're not giving them a steady storyline to follow along with or get attached to. So I think that this Jojo rebrand is a huge missed opportunity, and I'm not sure if she will pull it together in time or if this is just, she's going to ride the ship till it sinks. Who knows? I hate to categorize all of my emotions with this one word, but when I watch or listen to Jojo right now, it just makes me cringe. It really does. I, I feel uneasy. I don't like it. And I understand why people are laughing at her, unfortunately, but that's just truly how I feel. So that's the thing with Jojo. Let's move on to Evelyn. Evelyn is a 13-year-old who was just promoted by Allure Magazine. Allure Magazine is huge. I, I, I remember, you know, buying Allure magazines when I was younger when, you know, having paper magazines was like much more normal than it is now, I guess. But I used to love Allure and I do follow them on Instagram and they shared tween beauty influencer Evelyn celebrated turning 13 and returning to TikTok. And they post her video as a reel on their Instagram page. The caption of this video reads, if the tween beauty boom had a mascot, it'd be Evelyn. The TikTok phenom who shot to fame last year for her Get Ready With Me videos. Products like Drunk Elephant, Glow Recipe, and Super Goop make frequent appearances, but it's the brutally honest observations Evelyn dishes out while applying them that won the hearts of her 500,000 followers, until TikTok banned her account, that is. Now, having just celebrated her 13th birthday, she is back on the platform like she never left, we talked to Evelyn and her mom to get the full story on who she really is and what's next at the link in our bio. I cannot stand that Allure is actively promoting, interviewing, and paying a literal 13-year-old child to be interviewed and they're advertising her social media on their social media. The world that we're living in where Companies and brands like Drunk Elephant, Glow Recipe, Summer Friday, Sephora, Ulta, all of these big brands, they are also actively participating in allowing children to become super famous. 
because they are sending the PR and they're inviting them to an event or they're inviting them to um, promote this new product because the brands have no morals. And if you're platforming a child and paying that child, or even if you're just paying them in free product, that is a huge, huge issue. Now, some of y'all might be asking, why did Evelyn get such a large fan base? Number one, of course, I talk about it all the time. It's the creepy weirdos who like watching young kids online. But then there's also this other demographic of other people who watch her content that find her funny. Evelyn is known, and I will include one of her videos just for context, but of course I will blur her face because she is still a minor. Evelyn is very sassy. She's very snarky. She's very, it's almost like the mean girl. She's like the mean girl from middle school who has turned it into her social media personality. Does that annoy me? When a girl is wearing a band shirt, or an NFL shirt, and someone goes, name five songs, name five players, name five people who actually like you. Things that I hate. People who call girls a bop for doing literally anything. A girl could lip sync to a Taylor Swift song and all the comments would be like, bop, you're a bop, bop. Like, things that annoy me. When somebody posts a recipe for, let's say, apple pie, and then somebody comments, but what if I'm allergic to apples? Like maybe if you're allergic to apples, you shouldn't be making apple pie. When someone says me instead of my on purpose. Can you grab it out of me backpack? Shut up. It's literally just embarrassing. She wears the Lululemon. She, you know, uses the most expensive products at Sephora, like their water. And that's just her gig. The other adults that I have seen sharing Evelyn's videos and saying, oh my God, she's so funny. Oh my God, she's a queen, iconic, slay. Those adults are also part of the problem. And I don't know about y'all, but I want to be part of the solution. Once in a while, maybe am I a part of a problem? Sure, because I'm a human being. But overall, I don't want to promote people like this and call them queen and slay. It's literally a child. She is literally a child that should not be doing what she's doing. She jumps up on TikTok, wears the little midriffs, wears the little short shorts, puts all the expensive products on her face, and the people that have engaged with her content so much to build her channel to the point where she is being interviewed by Allure Magazine, shame on y'all. Whether it's a brand or a person, I don't care. All right, so let's move on to Avery Woods and then I will address the comment that I want to at the end of this video. So Avery Woods, I've covered her in a couple of other previous videos. She is an influencer that is absolutely has used her kids. She was a, uh, she was a pediatric ICU nurse who got popular on TikTok by doing these problematic vlogs over sharing her young daughter while protecting her son from social media. And it put her in a position where now she's an influencer and she still shows her children. Hey asswipes, come with me to my first dance class. Mom squeezed my rolls into this tiny ass outfit and bought me tap shoes that are cutting off the circulation of my cankles. I immediately changed into my Crocs because I kept eating shit on the wood floor with my tap shoes. Before dance, I had to make sure I completed my morning chore, which was mowing the floor. And you can bet your sweet ass I won't be dropping this baba out of my mouth, even if the world was ending. Loaded up in the car and got my tablet, because you guys know I fucking hate any car ride. Once we got to dance, I got to explore the room to make sure I wasn't going to lose my shit. There's so much room for activity in here, I cannot wait to bounce off the walls and not listen to a thing anyone's telling me to do. Obviously, I had to do a little warm-up because I'm already a professional dancer and I don't need any teacher telling me how or what to do because I'm already the best. Had to do a quick little outfit check to make sure I was the cutest one there and then it was time to get started. I met some new friends in the hallway who taught me how to use my tap shoes on the floor and I almost ate shit again. Mom completely abandoned me and sat on the other side of this window because she's a bitch and I lost my mind when I knew that she wasn't going to be in the room with me. My teacher's really cool though, she's my new favorite person, she held my hand to make sure I didn't fall while I gave mom a bitchy side eye. Then we did some jumps, which, holy Santa Claus shit, there's no way I'm able to get as much air as normal jumping in tap shoes on a slick floor. Then I got to shimmy, which is my favorite part, check this out. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. 
We did some more jumping, and then I saw this really cute girl I thought would be my friend, so I gave her a hug and totally caught her off guard. After that, we did a train, chugga chugga choo choo, and I got to be the caboose because obviously I'm the best dancer here. Then my teacher tried to show me how to tap my toes, but honestly I couldn't do it because my feet are so chubby I had no blood flow left from these damn tap shoes. All in all, I decently enjoyed dance, and my mom was really proud of me because I only lost my shit like five times. I did so good that my teacher gave me a sucker, and I ended my morning by littering it on the ground. She does do other content, like get ready with me, and you know, day in the life vlog, whatever. Not content that I gravitate towards. Even if it wasn't including her kids, it's not content that I would find entertaining. But she has a very large and dedicated audience. Now, as we all know, with dedicated fans also comes dedicated people that are critics. And that's just, it's name in the game. No matter if you're a small channel or a bigger channel, obviously if you're a bigger channel, you're gonna have more critics than if you're smaller. And most people that create content realize that that, that just, it comes with the territory. But um, most of the people that criticize her are focusing on the content that she has made around parenting and showing her kids. She recently showed a day in the life little vlog of their Easter Sunday. And as her kids are sitting at the table, her son is wearing a blue dress. And automatically people picked up on this. They were super upset about it. A lot of people were, um, saying really mean and nasty things about the child, which I'm not gonna share here, but what I would like to say about Avery Woods showing her son wearing a dress is, my God, please don't become the next Jonathan Jolie. For the love of God, if your child is truly going through this set of emotions and this is something that they are experiencing, please do not make it content. Do not use this child as a prop. Do not um, center any content around this. And the best solution would be take your kids off of TikTok. Take them completely offline. If you have so much faith in your audience that you're over here calling them your besties and hey friends and hey best friend. Morning besties. Morning besties. Good morning, besties. Morning, besties. Hi, besties. Good morning, besties. Good morning, besties. Good morning, besties. If you're doing that, you should have enough confidence to also say, I am no longer going to be a toxic boy mom who is oversharing my daughter and putting her in compromising positions on video. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and take the kids off and it's going to be about me and my husband because we are consenting adults and we can go ahead and make this channel what I want it to be without centering the, the, the kids. Now, I'm not sure where else this is going to go, but as soon as she showed her son wearing this dress, automatically it's trending on TikTok, Avery Woods, her son's name, dress. This is just, it, it's so unfortunate to see how parents will use, they will use any moment that might be different or troubling or maybe not what they consider normal kid behavior. And I'm putting that in air quotes in case you're listening only. And they automatically think, let me go ahead and make sure that this is part of the vlog. Let me go ahead and make sure that this is part of the video because I know that it will get attention and it will drive comments and they automatically, their brains automatically go to algorithm equals paycheck. And if they are relying on social media as their full-time income, then their standards go out the window. And for a lot of them, they stay out the window and some of them, you know, set them on fire and flush them down the toilet. It's really sad. The daughter that she would overshare, and in my opinion, sometimes bully, because she would um, make, with these voiceovers, she would say things that are not nice about her daughter's body. She, of course, will call it a joke. Oh, it's funny. Ha ha, kiki. Uh, it's not funny. And it's not cute. It never was. 
but a lot of these vlogs have been re-uploaded to other accounts. One of the accounts I have right here, and you can see that this poor child has been re-uploaded to a TikTok account with 40 followers. And this poor little girl is plastered all over this channel. Once you put the kids out there, you cannot get the content back. I've talked about this for four years now. The internet is forever and knowing that it's forever and knowing things that are knowing that things are re-uploaded, screenshotted, shared on other platforms, you as an adult with a fully intact brain should know from the start, is this something that I want to share? Is this, is my child's privacy worth? me possibly becoming a full-time content creator. And if you think that's okay, then Jesus take the wheel. But I think that's really, really sad when these parents want to sit on their platforms and say, oh, I protect my kids. I love my kids. I would do anything for them while you are literally plastering them online so that you can sit your ass at home and be a full-time content creator. Pathetic. That's how I feel about it. So to close out this video on a little bit of a sweeter note, I want to share a comment that I received. Um, it's been maybe a week or so now, but I saved this comment and I, I was going to make a dedicated video, but I think that I think now is a good time to go ahead and share it. This is from one of my longtime subscribers and they said, you've been one of the most consistent channels I have ever watched. I started watching you when you had around 3,000 subscribers. You've never changed for views or money. Really? And one of my other longtime subscribers responded and said, I love to hear this. I've been here for years and she's the first video I watch every day. And I can also say that she hasn't changed throughout her journey here. I wouldn't say this about any other creator, but I do actually trust her and her opinions are always on point. So I appreciate both of those subscribers so much. And I did respond to that comment. Um, it made me cry the first time I read it and it's obviously getting me going again. What I want to say is I appreciate y'all so much. And even though YouTube, like becoming a full-time YouTuber has never been on my list of things that I want to accomplish with this channel, because I've said before, I think that being a full-time content creator is just, it's the ebbs and flows and the unpredictability of it all is a bit too much for me. I'm a very anxious person and I just, um, I, I, I overanalyze everything and I'm, I, I would like to know that <laughs> I would like to know that, you know, I, I have this and YouTube is just extra and YouTube went from something that I was doing as a hobby that I wasn't you know, my channel wasn't monetized for a long time. And then my channel got monetized and I continued to be really consistent with uploads and all of that. And now, you know, my channel continues to grow and I'm still a very small YouTuber. And I always recognize that, but I've always felt like my community is so meaningful and it's so powerful to me that there is, there are some of my subscribers, and if you're not one of them, this is okay. Like, this is not an insult or to be, you know, weird about it. But my core fan base, I could upload a video talking about the plants in my backyard. And y'all would sit there and listen. And you would leave comments and um, engage with something that's really silly. So that's not to be shady towards 
subscribers who, um, that's not to be shady towards subscribers that are only interested in family vlogger stuff or whatever. Like, that's totally fine. I appreciate all of y'all, but this channel has, um, this channel has turned into something that I'm really passionate about. And even though I'm still in the same position that I don't want to pursue it full time unless I was ever put in a position where it was my only option to pursue it full time. Um, that doesn't mean that I care any less about my content. I've always tried to be very consistent and, you know, working full time, managing a life outside YouTube and being consistent with video uploads. It sounds like it might be easy, but it's actually not easy to do that every single day. And obviously, you know, I miss uploads here and there, but then there's other days where I post two videos. And just the fact that to some people, my message has remained consistent and clear. And even if we don't agree all the time, just the fact that I have people that consistently understand that my effort is there, my morals are on full display, and if and when I make a mistake, I will own it. I will own it all day long. And I know that there are, um, you know, people who don't like me. And like I said, with the Avery Woods thing, that's just the name of the game. From the time that I had 500 subscribers, there were even people back then, maybe only a couple, but there were people back then, oh, she's annoying. Oh, she's stupid. Oh, she doesn't know what she's talking about. Oh, you're boring. Your, your voice is annoying. I have literally heard it all. And then once I moved into covering influencers and family vloggers, it was, oh, you're not a parent, so your opinion is invalid. Oh, you're covering this person too often. Oh, you're, um, you're exploiting the exploited kids. Like, even though I protect the kids' identities on my channel. Um, so it's always something, and you're never going to make everybody happy. I feel that as long as my stance stays pretty consistent. Like I've always had the same stance with family vloggers, just protect your kids. Like I'm not saying don't ever share a clip of your kid, but don't like, why are your kids being shown in bathing suits? Why are you showing like diaper changes and bath time and stuff like that? You know, if you're in target, don't film other people. And you know, as far as other YouTubers go, don't lie to your subscribers. Don't sad fish and grift and don't be a bully. Like, don't be, um, don't be a mean girl or a mean guy. Like, it's so easy to deliver criticism. If your message is clear, I've always said you should be able to deliver that message without saying so-and-so is ugly, their voice is annoying, you know, their eyes look funny. Like, I have stuck by that my entire time on YouTube. And either way, I don't want to get off on this whole tangent because I really don't, um, I, I really don't ever hardly address people that, you know, don't like me or want to manipulate my message or make me out to be something that I'm not. I really try to refrain from ever talking about that. But, um, seeing that message just really, really made my day. It's been a little bit of an interesting year so far. I'm, um, I'm good, but you know, life gets a little complicated and I'm trying to make sure that everything is, um, good and everything's flowing and y'all can understand. I'm sure that you have a million things going on as well. And, um, yeah, so I just really appreciated that comment, and it really made my day. But either way, I have an antsy Axel here, so I'm going to wrap this up here. If you like the video, please leave a like and a comment. And if you'd like to see more from me in the future, please subscribe. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.